Hello there you beautiful people, my name is Willow and welcome to another Fallout 4 challenge run. My last run with only crafting ended up being pretty complicated and rough, so today we're going to be tackling something a little bit simpler while we find out if I can beat Fallout 4 survival difficulty with only melee weapons. Before we get into the run, let's lay down some ground rules. I can only use melee weapons, unarmed weapons excluded. I must play the entire game on the survival difficulty. I can't use bugs or glitches on purpose to exploit the game. I can only use visual mods, which will be shown on screen now, and I cannot use console commands for anything but fixing bugs. With the rules of the run laid out, let's take a look at the challenge itself. I know others have done this run before, but I'm not sure if they've done so on the survival difficulty, and I'm excited to see if I can do it myself. Either way, I'm writing this script as I go, and all of this part has been written prior to beginning the run. If you want to skip past my starting thoughts and get right into the gameplay, skip to the timecode on screen now. Now that they're gone, let's dump some info. This run is rather simplistic, but don't let that fool you as I think this is going to be the hardest challenge I've attempted so far. Survival difficulty changes so much about how you play, especially when it comes to how you approach fights, and the big thing is that both us and the enemies are much frailer, so you tend to use cover and play things slowly. Meanwhile, melee in Fallout tends to reward players for playing fast and charging in. These two realities are at odds with each other and it's going to be interesting to see what is and isn't going to be a pitfall. That's enough theory crafting though, let's talk about the tools of our trade. There are a ton of really good melee weapons in Fallout 4, from the humble pipe wrench all the way up to the high tech ripper, and I'll put a few highlights on screen now as I talk about perks. So normally I don't talk about perks until we're into setting up our special stats, but there's a couple of perks I'm banning to make this run a bit more spicy. I'm not allowed myself to use the Blitz or Pain Train perks as I feel the run will be more interesting if I don't use them. With that out of the way, we're done with my pre-run thoughts and honestly with how straightforward this run is, I don't have a ton to say. I think I can beat the game but I'm going to have to change the way I play quite a bit. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more of my challenge videos. Jumping right into it, we start with character creation in our pre-war bathroom which is fitting because our character looks like he needs a shower. We spend the next few minutes watching a very convincing ad compelling me to buy a fat man. And right before I go to pick up the phone and order one, I'm interrupted by a man at the door who informs me of the state of this country. If you haven't noticed, sir, this country has gone to heck in a handbasket. Afterwards, he lets me sign up for the end of the world. No, I can't wait for the world to end. And it's here where we pick our name and special stats. I go with 9 strength for the increased melee damage as well as the blacksmith and big league perks, 1 perception because who needs to see, 9 endurance for more HP and perks like life giver and toughness, 1 charisma because why use many words when few do trick, 1 intelligence because I don't know, 6 agility for action points as well as the sneak and action boy perks, and 1 luck because I break mirrors. After he leaves, our son named Sean starts crying so much that it causes the end of the world. We make our way to Vault 111 at a leisurely pace, talking to everyone on the way, before seeing a big angry mushroom that forces us underground. We jump into the world's least efficient coffin and fall asleep for 150 years, only to wake up and watch our wife catch a bullet which is very impressive, before taking another 60 year or so nap, only to wake up and realize our wife can only do her part trick once. Well, I guess we should head out and find Sean, and we start by picking up this baton and murdering all of the rad roaches in the vault, which feels amazing. After the last two challenges, I'm happy to get a little bit of revenge on these six-legged losers. We exit the vault and kill some more rad roaches in Sanctuary, and while we're cooking up the rad roach meat, we level up, taking the life giver perk for more HP. I then go talk to Codsworth, our emotionally dependent 200-year-old robot servant and run around the neighborhood pretending we are pest exterminators with him before heading to our old house and using the Your Special Book to level up our agility to 7 and on the way out we grab the Grognak comic for more critical damage with melee weapons before making our way south. We find a tire iron on the far side of the bridge out of Sanctuary and I grab it. I then continue my journey south until I find a small pond called Walden's Pond and it's here where I find a drainage pipe that we can enter. I do so and start exploring the drainage system.
system, and then I hear two men talking. Using third person cam to see them, it's obvious that they are raiders, so I wait for a good opportunity and then rush them down. I get my head crippled and have to use a stim pack, but we stay alive to encounter two more raiders. Playing it slow once again, we wait for our best chance and then rush in and use vets to deal with the last of the raiders. I barely survive the encounter, and melee really gets my blood pumping. Every fight, I can feel my heart beating as all the progress since the last time I slept flashes before my eyes. Either way, while exploring the area, we find a legendary pipe wrench named Big Jim. It already has two more damage than our current tire iron, and it does more damage to the legs of our enemies. I quickly make my way back to Sanctuary. Oh, and on the way home, I leveled up and took the blacksmith perk so I could upgrade Big Jim more. With our trusty legendary pipe wrench at our side, we make our way south once again and meet Trash Can Carla. After trying to court her and then getting rejected, Just looking for love, sweetheart. <laughs> Boy, have you come to the wrong place. My loving days have long since passed. We trade with her and then come upon the Drumlin Diner. There are two drug dealers trying to shake down a woman named Trudy for caps, and I decide to try and use the speech checks here to talk them out of conflict and, uh, die. Because I fail a speech check and get shot by Trudy. Hmm, I try this a couple more times, siding with both Trudy and Wolfgang to no avail, until I remember that this entire thing is about drugs. And if drugs caused this, then why can't they finish it? I use some Psycho and Jet to take care of Wolfgang and Simone, and Trudy gives us a discount and some caps for our troubles. We then continue on our merry way south, and we approach a house filled with ghouls, and I decide to try out Big Jim. He does very well, almost if not one-shotting every ghoul I hit. I end up leveling up off killing these ghouls, and I decide to take the Big Leagues perk to increase our melee damage. After sleeping for a bit, I continue south into Cambridge, where I fight through a few more ghouls and find find Paladin Dance and his struggle against the Commonwealth. I help him out and talk to him completing the fire support quest, which levels us up and I decide to take the toughness perk since every bit of damage resist makes the early game so much easier. Dance asks me to help him in retrieving some kind of whatchamacallit, and I say yes and then decide to run off ignoring him. Nearby the police station, we find some dead raiders with a note on them, and upon reading the note I get challenged to find some dude named Pikmin and get a new location added to our maps. Well, silly him, he told me where he is. This sounds fun, and it's close to Bunker Hill, so I head off towards the map marker, and on the way there, I decide to stop by Bunker Hill and do some trading. We're already nearing a thousand caps, and I'm planning to save up and try and find some good legendary weapons or armors for this run, since I won't have to be buying ammo like I normally do. With the trading settled, we leave Bunker Hill to go see what's the deal with this Pikmin fella, making our way to his gallery, and find some raiders outside that we take out by hiding behind a corner and waiting for them to come around before for using vats to tell Big Jim to rearrange their facial features. After dealing with the ones outside with only minor difficulty, we make our way inside and do pretty well. Killing off the first floor of raiders without an issue, they are all ranting and raving about finding this Pikmin dude, I guess he's pretty popular. Either way, we end up dying on the second floor, and this seems doable. I'll just come back and die again, and again, and a few more times for good measure, until eventually we do get further. Managing to kill off all the floors and make our way into the walls where we find a way down into the basement sewer place? I don't know, I'm kind of confused where we are, but there are more raiders. We slowly make our way through them, picking them off one by one and hiding a lot before finding a room with a raider survivalist. He's gonna be hard to take down, but Psycho, Jet, and Buff Out should be enough. no. We died. Well, I guess we can't do this dungeon yet. Damn. Well, nearby here is the Old North Church, and I think I need some guidance on this run, so I figured what better place than a church to find my way. When I enter, I find some feral ghouls, and I had reservations about hurting them in a place of worship, but put them down in the end. I head into the catacombs, killing more ghouls before playing with a spinny thing which opens a door? I walk into the dark room and the lights flash on, revealing a redhead, newsboy, and minigun lady. They're confused why I'm here, and honestly, so am I 
why? Until a man named Deacon decides to vouch for me and we complete a quest leveling up. Hey, we take the sneak perk and get a quest from Deacon to join him for some secret special operation. Well, maybe it'll be easier than the Pikmin dungeon, so we head out and meet Deacon at an overpass and he is disguised as a scavenger and honestly, it's pretty convincing. After walking around, learning about some secret signs and killing some ghouls, we meet up with a dude named Ricky who tells us that the area we're headed to is heavily defended by Institute Synths. Well, Deacon says we're going to use the escape tunnel, so I head into it and he tells us we're here to get some sort of prototype. Honestly, I wasn't paying much attention, I just kind of wanted to be involved in something, so I wait for him to use a computer door to open a sewer system that's filled with metal men. We kill the first one without issue, but die pretty quickly on the second room. Huh. I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to beat this unless I let Deacon do most of the fighting, and honestly, anytime there's more than one enemy attacking us, we're kinda screwed. I can sometimes kill two enemies before going down, and I wonder if this is going to change throughout the run or not. Either way, I decide to give the Slocum Joe's dungeon a few more tries with Duncan. Wait. <laughs> I wrote Duncan instead of Deacon. All right, well, we give it another shot, and this time, after being incredibly patient, we make it past the room we died in, letting Deacon do the majority of the work. I then die in the next room. Yeah, this is a lot of dying. Trying again, I take it even slower and make it all the way to the switchboard, which is the former home of the railroad. We fight through the synths, or more accurately, Deacon does, and we occasionally help out, and I eventually make my way into the last room of the dungeon and die trying to help Deacon kill the synth leader. Okay, so we patiently waltz our way back, and this time when the synths come to attack us, I run away like a wuss. After clearing out the synths and retrieving Carrington's prototype, we get a gun. Well, at least it'll sell well. We go to leave the switchboard and, uh, die to a landmine outside. Damn it! Alright, I, I do all of that again, without dying, and start making my way back to the Old North Church. We arrive and find Deacon spinning some heroic tale of us killing a hundred cents and carrying him through the dungeon. And the new guy patched me up, put me on his shoulder, and blasted his way through the rest of the complex. Synths everywhere. Carrying you the whole time? Amazing, right? That's one word for it. And if you want me to carry you on my shoulders through a hundred synths, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I tell Desdemona the truth, and we get inducted into the railroad. After choosing my nickname, I enter the railroad HQ and give the prototype back to Carrington, who I should mention is a real tightwad. He's all upset that I got inducted into the railroad after risking Deacon's life and limb for his prototype. Either way, he told me to go pick up something called a dead drop out of a mailbox. And on a side note, I got injected with battery acid by Tinker Tom, which was really funny. Okay, okay. If you really want to be safe, let me give you a little shot. There's, there's the motor. Says no one has to, but it will kill those little robots. There's battery acid in that serum of yours. You can't nuke an omelet without irradiating some eggs. You ready to shoot up? Hit me, Tom. Yeah, now you talking. I head out of the HQ using the escape tunnel, and I realize it's right next to Pikmin's gallery, and we have leveled up a couple of times, so let's try again. Oh, also, I took the second rank of the Big Leagues perk to increase my damage. I enter, and by using Stealth and Vats, we make it about as far as we did before, but this time we step on a landmine, and I die again. I'm chalking this death up to the last challenge run, which got me really comfortable with just ignoring traps, because I had high levels of the stealth perk. Either way, I make my way back fighting through the raiders and slowly brutalizing each and every one of them with Big Jim until we reach the room with the raider survivalist. This time, I don't mess around. I kill the scaver with him and then run away until he loses aggro before coming back in, popping buff out Jet and Psycho in order to make short work of him. I find a bed behind a turret I killed and sleep to save before heading deeper into the dungeon where we find Pikmin surrounded by raiders that are led by a man named Slab. Well, I like to see fair fights so I jump in to help out Pikmin and murder Slab and his goons after taking more drugs. 
Pikmin thanks us by giving us a key to a save hidden behind a painting in his gallery. I go check out the save and find Pikmin's Blade, a legendary combat knife that inflicts even more bleed damage than the regular combat knife. This will be a great addition to our arsenal, and I make my way back to the Railroad HQ and get given a quest to set up some gizmo for Tinker Tom. I then decide to head out and check the dead drop that Dr. Carrington told me about, and I get a holotape from Old Man Stockton about about a package that he needs moved. I head over to him and he talks about how he thought I'd be a woman and how he needs someone to clear out some raiders for his package to be delivered. I tell him I'll handle it and head over to the delivery location to kill the raiders using our new legendary bleeding stick and I'm really surprised when old man Stockton shows up with a person. I didn't know that I was signing up for human trafficking. I hope the pay is good. I then have to help move H222, a synth, to a safe house with a dude named High Rise. I managed to get there with little issue, only killing a couple of raiders and then head back to Carrington to turn in the quest and he tells me of another dead drop. Is this a radiant quest? Either way, I decide now is as good a time as any to start progressing the story. So I head to Park Street Station and grab another issue of Grognak the Barbarian from an irradiated gazebo nearby, and then I enter the subway to find some mafia men who quickly kill me. Oh man, I need some joy in my life right now, so... Hey Google, play Never Gonna Give You Up by Rick Astley. I'm realizing now that nothing in this run is going to be easy, is it? Well, we make our way back and try again, and this time I manage to get past the first room, and I also kill a decent number of the triggermen in the second room, but in the end, I die again. Also, this run is really brutal. I have to approach fights really slowly because I'm heavily dependent on sneak. When I die, I lose so much more time than I have in previous runs, and it's really making things go very slowly for me. I try again and die to the last triggerman in the second room, which was brutal, and then, well, I keep trying until I clear this area. I then save by sleeping in a bed and start making my way deeper into the subway station. I manage to kill the three triggermen in front of the vault door relatively easily before entering the vault where things start going smoother. I clear the vault entrance with no issue, but then die to a couple of triggermen because I try to charge them down but they just kill me with a couple of bursts from 10mm pistols. I go at it again, this time managing to kill them by hiding behind a door, and then I reach a very large open cave. I die here pretty quickly again, but we know the song and dance, so I come back, I try a different route, and by baiting the triggermen to come to me instead of trying to rush them down, I managed to kill all the triggermen in this room. Honestly, this fight was crazy intense, and I thought I was gonna die a bunch of times, but eventually I stand victorious over a bunch of Triggerman corpses. After this, we make our way into the vault proper and find a Triggerman named Dino talking to someone named Nick. This Nick fella tells him that his boss is going to whack him, so we lay in wait and jump him using our bleedy stick to spill his blood all over the floor before rescuing Nick, who turns out to be a metal man detective. After telling him we need to find the man who killed our wife and stole our son, he says he'll help Help, but we need to leave the vault first. So I head off deeper into the vault, murdering many, many triggermen with little to no issue. I decide to take a quick eight hour nap before leaving the vault with Nick, and when we leave, we find the leader of these gangsters, Skinny Malone, along with a couple of his goons and his girlfriend. I know I won't pass any speech checks, so I take all the drugs and rush them down, killing all four of them in quick succession. After bathing in the blood of the not so innocent, we make our way outside the subway station and follow Nick to Diamond City. We end up killing a legendary dog and some super mutants on the way, and when we arrive at the front gate, I follow Valentine's lead and ignore the mayor and Piper. Once inside, I decide to trade with all the people here, and we pick up the Rockville Slugger, a legendary baseball bat that uses 40% less action points than vets. Our arsenal of legendary melee weapons is growing quite quickly. You know what else is growing quickly? This channel. If you want more challenge videos in your feed, please consider subscribing. Also, I've set up channel memberships where you can get picture updates and vote on things like the next challenge run or names for weapons in the run. Click the join button down below for more info. Back to the run, I go to the detective agency and do an interview with Nick. For the first time ever, I decide to just be polite instead of sassing him. We then head off to a house owned by a man named Kellogg, who we believe did a naughty by shooting my wife and stealing my son. I can't manage to pick the lock on the door, so I head up to the mayor's office, fail some speech checks, 
checks, and then pick the lock on the secretary's desk to get the key. We return to Nick and head inside Kellogg's house to press a button that opens an overly complex door in the wall that's hiding his cigars and booze? I just realized how silly the fact that he built a room to hide basically nothing is. Either way, we let dog meat sniff the cigar and then don't follow him because I have better things to do like settlement building. So I head over to Hangman's Alley and start using our new bat to bash in some heads and I'm dead. Okay, well, maybe the second attempt will go better. We run bad dead again. Third time's the charm, more death. Well, we keep trying until I manage to clear out the raiders and claim the settlement as my own, and we even manage to level up, taking the second rank of toughness. Oh, also, I missed a few level ups, so here's what we have right now. The toughness, big leagues, life giver, and sneak perks are all rank two, while the blacksmith and rooted perks are rank one. With that update out of the way, I head out to Fort Hagen to confront Kellogg. When I arrive, I find a legendary radstag outside and kill it before making our way past the turrets to find out they are stopping me from sleeping in a bed in the parking garage. Well, I'm not making that hike again, so I sneak to the roof, kill the turrets, and get a nice nap before heading inside. Also, Dogmeat was glitching out and not letting me talk to him until I got inside, but once I could, I sent him to Hangman's Alley before going up some stairs and turning on a Protectron, who actually clears out a lot of the synths on the main level for me, which was super nice. We keep making our way through the fort, killing off a ton of synths and turrets until the Protectron turns on us and scares the bejesus out of me. Luckily, it steps on a landmine, making it easy for us to finish it off before continuing on. So far, this dungeon has been very easy. We kill the synths in one or two hits max, and stealthing has made it simple. We make it down to the lower rooms, and Kellogg tells me to turn around and leave because he doesn't need a roommate. Sorry, your house has been a wreck for 200 years, but I don't need a roommate. Leave. And honestly, I found this very convincing, so we leave and answer the question, can I beat Fallout? I'm, I'm kidding. I decided to go outside and save, since I got the sinking feeling that this dungeon was going too well, and I didn't want to lose all my progress. I enter the Fort Hagen Command Center, and it goes fine. I kill a ton of turrets and synths, and there's one moment where I get scared because a synth patroller spawns, but using our new bat, we can hit it like seven times in a row in bats, which lets me deal with it easily. We reach Kellogg, and scream at him about our son. You murdering, kidnapping psychopath. Give me my son. Give me Sean. No! Right. And my first attempt to kill him goes poorly, not even managing to kill Kellogg, much less his synths. But nevertheless, I try again using all the knowledge I've learned in this run, which means we shoot up some psychos, swallow some buff out, and inhale some jet to allow me to beat Kellogg's face into a really nice red paste before panicking so hard in vats it broke my recording for a second in order to kill the synths. I then go through Kellogg's terminal, really disappointed we didn't find anything saucy, before heading outside to see the Pridwin fly in. After admiring this scene, I head back towards Diamond City and decide to do some of those railroad quests we got earlier. We start by heading south of Boston and find an odd scene of two Yaogwai fighting a glowing one ghoul, and I decide discretion is the better part of valor and grab what I need out of the mailbox dead drop and split. After listening to the holotape, I find out I need to go to some safe house in Cambridge. Making my way there isn't too difficult, and I enter to find the place swarming with the dungeon is relatively easy, and we use a Protectron to clear out a couple of the raiders, and then have a butt-clenching stare-down with a room full of raiders as I try not to get detected, but eventually I manage to bash my way through all of the raiders without dying, and find a holotape that reveals the safe house was found by the Institute. With that, I need to return to Dr. Carrington, and on the way back I decide to set up Tinker Tom's Mila device, which was also easy. When I return to the railroad, I go to turn in the quests when Drummer Boy says Pam needs me. Who is Pam? Oh well, I turn in the quests and Tinker Tom asks me to set up another Mila unit while Carrington just thanks me for my work. I then head out to Pam, who turns out to be some kind of super smart assaultron. Either way, she asks me to set up the Starlight Drive-In as a safe house for escaped synths, and that sounds super easy, so I figure why not and head out towards the Starlight Drive-In, clearing it of mole rats before claiming the workbench, only to realize I have no crafting mats. We then spend the next 
spend minutes scrapping and trading with Trudy in order to meet the settlement requirements Pam gave us before heading back to her and turning in the quest. She gives us another quest, and I decide it's worth getting a little bit more EXP and levels before continuing the main storyline, so I run off to find this DIA cache she wants us to find. Oh, also, I leveled up during the whole Starlight construction and decided to take the first rank of the Armorer perk. If you want to help level up this channel, consider liking this video and subscribing. Now, where were we? Oh right, securing some DIA cash. Apparently, the DIA are the Fallout Universe's CIA, and they hid some special caches all around, and Pam wants us to find one. She gave us a general location, and on the way to find it, I died to a super mutant. Getting one shot is really annoying, especially when I can't keep my distance. I try another route to reach the cache, and this time things go smoothly. We don't even have to fight anyone. So on the way back to the Railroad HQ, I decide to take a little detour to Backstreet Apparel so we can set up the second Mila for Tinker Tom. And oh my god did I get pissed off by this. Watch this. I targeted these two raiders and bats, two hits each, which should kill them. The first raider goes down, no issue. The second one gets hit the first time, and then for no reason, I just stand there, locked in bats, not attacking, until it randomly boots me out and I end up dying because third person melee is impossible in this game. Some of you may be wondering why I use third person so much, and the answer is that it makes VATS a lot easier and allows you to do things like hit people through doorways and get unique angles. But man oh man does VATS piss me off sometimes with melee when it decides just to not attack like this. This has happened throughout the run. I run back to Backstreet Apparel and angrily bash the skulls in of all the raiders before setting up the second Mila and returning to the Railroad HQ where I turn in the various quests and get told to speak with Tinker Tom, and he tells us about a new special armor modification we can get called Ballistic Weave. For some reason, I thought I could put this on the vault suit, but I was mistaken. I wanted to wear the vault suit for the entire run, but alas, it apparently cannot take the Ballistic Weave mod. So we get some armored military fatigues and upgrade them to Ballistic Weave Mark II, allowing us to have well over 100 damage resist naturally, which is huge. I think that we have spent enough time messing around with the railroad, let's get back to the main story. I head to Diamond City to tell Nick what happened with Kellogg. When I arrive, Piper is there grilling Nick about us. We tell them about what happened and then try to convince the two of them to hold a seance with me. We can talk to him. Feel like holding a seance? <laughs> a literal dead end, huh? They declined, instead thinking I should take a piece of Kellogg's brain to a Dr. Amari, so I decided to bring Piper with me because I was curious if she had any unique dialogue since the game hints that you can bring her, but no, she doesn't have any dialogue in regards to the conversation with Dr. Amari. In the spirit of the run, I did make sure she was using one of my weapons while we traveled, but overall it was just a disappointment as she stood there silently. Either way, we give Dr. Amari the brain and she plugs it into Nick. I then get to fast forward through Kellogg's life story to find out the Institute uses teleportation. Upon getting out of the memory lounger, we formulate a plan to go to the glowing sea and track down a former Institute scientist named Virgil. On our way there, I talk to Nick who starts speaking like Kellogg and uh, Piper, you gonna say anything? Really? Man, you suck. But do you know what doesn't suck? The new channel memberships. You can help name items like my weapons and armor during runs and even vote on what the next runs will be. Click the join button below to check it out. Now then, I am at the edge of the glowing sea and using a hazmat suit I grabbed from the Slocum Joes so long ago, and I start to wade through the radiation. This is easily the most tense I've ever been in Fallout because I know that certain enemies are a death sentence here. Multiple sting wings or even soul rad scorpions and death claws will kill me and I can't really do anything about it. I get pretty far on my first attempt before getting surprised by a few rad scorpions and quickly dying to them. On my second attempt, things go similarly, but miraculously, I managed to outrun the rad scorpions and the ghouls that I ran into by running away from the rad scorpions before reaching Virgil's cave. We have to sneak around and drop into Virgil's cave as to not wake the Deathclaw outside, but we made it and we stunlock Virgil by asking him how to get into the Institute. Quit your whining. I just need to know how to get inside. It's not whining if... wait, what? You want to get into the Institute. 
Are you insane? After a nice long chat, he tells me I need to go kill a high-class synth called a Corsair and sends me on my way to find one. We leave the glowing sea with no real encounters and make it back to Hangman's Alley, where I sleep and sigh a breath of relief. Alright, so now it's time to track down the Corsair. After using my Pip-Boy at the CIT ruins, I track the Corsair to Green Tech Genetics and head inside. I know this dungeon is rough even with ranged weapons, so I'm a bit worried about how it will go, and I make my way into the first room with hostiles. There's explosions, gunfire, and lasers flying around everywhere. I really like this set piece, and as I try to rush down our first group of gunners, I valiantly die. Yeah, this dungeon is gonna suck. Nevertheless, I'm going to keep at it, and our next attempt goes better. We get through the first few groups by stealthing and using Vats heavily, but then Vats betrays us again and decides not to attack, causing us to die from a gunner with a 10mm auto pistol and me to lose my shit. I want to clarify. I love Vats in the Fallout games, as it's so unique and a fun system to play with, but the bugs with it while using melee are a real bummer in Fallout 4. Either way, on our third attempt we get a little bit further, but unfortunately I get surprised by a gunner with a missile launcher which one-shots us. This particular section of the dungeon is nerve-wracking because the missile launcher is so deadly in survival. I have been banking up a lot of stealth boys this run so far, so I decided to start using them and my first first attempt at using them, I kind of have like a brain fart or something, and for some reason didn't decide to attack the gunner running right at me. What an epic fail! <laughs> Either way, we go at it this time again using Stealth Boys to actually make great progress. We deal with all the enemies in this section by sneak attacking them, and finally pass the Missile Launcher Menace. And then the other shoe drops and I die to another 10mm auto pistol after killing a legendary gunner. Oh man. Making our way back for the umpteenth time, I get back to the room I died in last time and die from a single Molotov. It's a disaster everybody, this run is a disaster. Disaster. I hate this dungeon. I try again and this time, could it be? I make it through all the gunners using a bunch of stealth boys and there's no way I kill the course on the first try, right? Well, I pop some chems and attempt it and oh my god, yes! Yes, I'm free from this insufferable dungeon! I kill the courser and the gunners, save the synth and ride the elevator back down. We also leveled up and I took the second rank of the blacksmith perk during the dungeon and after making a pit stop by Hangman's Alley to save, we run to the Old North Church and talk to Desdemona, who starts talking about a report she got from Green Tech Genetics. I tell her it was me, and then I killed a courser, and she asks why. I don't like lying, so I tell the truth. That ship in his neck just looks so shiny. I couldn't help it. And she gets all serious and has me give my newfound shiny prize to Tinker Tom. He then decodes it and gives me a holotape before I head off towards the Glowing Sea once more. As nerve-wracking as it is to travel through the Glowing Sea, this time it it went really smoothly with no real issues. We make it to Virgil's cave again for the last time, and he makes a funny joke about the railroad. How'd you manage to get it decoded? The railroad helped me. Oh god, those kooks. I would have expected they'd be too busy trying to liberate vending machines or setting computer terminals free or- Before giving us the plans for a signal interceptor which we can use to hijack a teleportation wave into the institute? I think? I think all this technological mumbo jumbo is weird but anyways, I head over to the railroad HQ, tell Desdemona, she tells us to talk to Tom who makes me laugh with his reaction to the plans. Hopefully it'll be easier than- Assembling Sean's crib. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Who wrote this? Some kid with a crayon? She must have been a real big kid. And then tells me to go build the reflector platform at the Starlight Drive-In. Why do I always forget that I need like a ton of components for building the signal interceptor? I'm lazy and sitting on thousands of caps, so I just run around to all the traders I can find and buy a ton of junk. And through the magic of editing, here we are at the Starlight Drive-In with the entire signal interceptor built. We talk to Desdemona and she tells us about Patriot, a person inside the Institute who they don't know, but they do know that they're helping since escape. She gives us a holotape that should help us locate him, and can I say that Tinker Tom may be my favorite NPC. I love everything he says during the teleport sequence, and he just makes me laugh. So stand still, you gotta lock in all those molecules of yours. Hopefully we won't miss any. There's only, you know, 60 trillion of them. All right, feeding our baby some juice. Let's see what she's got. Take this holotape. 
You needed to contact Patriot. Oh, man, uh, don't worry. That's, that's all part of the plan. Either way, I get beamed into the Institute, use a holotape on a terminal, and get a reply from Patriot with a place to meet. Before we can meet him, though, we have to go through the old song and dance with Father and wait, just... What? He he just stopped talking. What? Now I have to go through all of that dialogue again? Oh man, this this run has been filled with irritating glitches. Well, we go through all of his dialogue again, head off and meet the directors of robotics, bioscience, and the SRB before meeting Patriot, who's a man named Liam Benet. He gets really surprised when he finds out I'm with the railroad, and then hatches a scheme with us and a synth named Z114 to help 13 synths escape all in one go. I like this idea and tell him I'll help by going off to get a username and password from the Commonwealth. After that, we meet Dr. Lee in Advanced Systems and get a Courser chip placed on our Pip-Boy. With that, I teleport out of the Institute and run all the way back to the Railroad HQ. And while I run there, you should consider going down below and hitting that subscribe button. Come on, it's free! I know how much you like pressing big red buttons. Do it! No one's gonna judge you about it. Oh look, we're here at the HQ, and Desdemona asks us to write a report of the Institute on Pam's term so we go and do that. Afterward, Pam gives me the location where I should be able to find the username and password for Patriot. With this information, I head off to Cambridge Polymer Labs, and you may notice me walking around in power armor from here on out. Earlier in the run, off screen, I got a full set of T-45 power armor from the military barge near Pickman's Gallery, and I've been banking fusion cores to use it all run. I enter Cambridge Polymer Labs and get a job. Cool! I'm now researcher something Wong. Quite the title, if I do say so myself. Yeah. After getting my dream job, I spend honestly way too long trying to figure out how to solve the puzzle that is this lab. I spent 20 minutes trying to figure out how to get into the room that I need to, and in frustration, I decided to kill some non-hostile turrets, and... Molly? The robot that gave us the job? The Miss Handy or whatever? Uh, she comes in all angry and is invulnerable, and that doesn't work. What the hell, Todd? Why does your game hate me? We die to the invulnerable robot, and I am so pissed I have to take a break from the run. I come back a few hours later and feel like an idiot when I find this tunnel that leads to the room where we needed to get to. Oh, at least I got this really nice power armor torso from this. I make my way back to the railroad HQ, and Dez tells us that Liam's plan is too short-sighted and that we should instead free all the synths by staging a revolt. I'm down for the plan and teleport into the Institute once more to talk to Z114, and tell him the new plan. He needs me to kill some guards so that his allied synths can stage a cave-in and start making weapons for the revolt. I head down and deal with the guards easily without ever getting hit. I then return to him and he tells me to keep working with father while his people builds the weapons, so I head to father and he wants me to track down and capture an escaped synth. This feels really, you know, against the railroad's wishes, but they said I also need to work with the institute, I guess I'll go do it? Also, I think in the future I'm going to start trying to get the aqua boy slash girl perks in these runs, as I've spent a lot more time than I thought I would swimming, since it's so much safer than traveling on land. I arrive at the flotilla and meet up with the courser, who immediately steps on a landmine and I immediately die to a turret. Oh, this is off to a good start. Either way, I manage to start progressing through the raiders, nothing particularly crazy happens, until a brotherhood vertebra drops off some knights who start trying to kill our courser. I ignore them and and try to make my way to the main structure where the synth we're trying to capture is, and right when I'm about to reach it, the vertebra dies and explodes on top of me, killing me. Man, I'm unlucky today. The next attempt, I say screw it and just book it to the main structure. I end up having to have this really intense fight with four or five raiders all at once, and manage to stand victorious over their corpses thanks to my trusty rent collector. Either way, I make it to the synth, capture him, and then teleport back to the institute where I still have to help them? How long is this gonna go on for? Well, now I need to help a courser reclaim four cents held by the railroad for father. So on the way to Bunker Hill, I make a quick pit stop to tell Desdemona that the institute is coming for the cents, and she tells me to lure the courser into a trap and kill him. I head to meet up with the courser 
Yeah, the line at the car wash was super long. Took me forever. Your attempt at humor is wasted. And when I get to Bunker Hill, I find a ton of Brotherhood soldiers fighting synths and railroad members. Huh, no one here is hostile, so I just walk my way into Bunker Hill and lure my coarser friend into the railroad ambush. I also get this sick shot of the railroad killing off all the enemies in here, and after they take down the coarser, I finish him off with my baseball bat and then head to the CIT ruins where I find synths killing super mutants. I make my way to the roof after spending a little too long trying to find the stairs that lead to it, and then I talk to Father in what is quite possibly the best dialogue to convince a player to hate the Institute before teleporting back into the Institute where I have to keep helping them still. Why is the Railroad main storyline involve so many missions helping the Institute? I guess I have no choice, so I go to the director's meeting to find out that I've been named as Father's successor. Neat. Not only am I a researcher, but I'm now a director. Snazzy. Afterwards, I'm told I need to talk with Allie Fillmore, a scientist in the Institute, about some operation. She tells me that the two of us are going to go to the mass fusion building to get some tech gizmo for their nuclear reactor. I say okay and head to the relay room to teleport there, and I get a pop-up saying some angry metal men won't like me if I do this, and I say okay and teleport in only to immediately die to the angry metal men. Okay, well, this is gonna suck, I can tell already. Yeah. Actually, you know what? No, I'm done. Fuck this. Well, would you look at that? A half-finished Fallout run. Well, we can't have that. So we go at it again, this time without power armor, and make pretty good progress, clearing out the roof without too much issue. After that, we ride an elevator down into the mass fusion building, having to crouch and pray that the Brotherhood on the way down doesn't mess us up too bad since we can't hit them from all the way over here with our melee weapons. Near the end of the elevator ride, the Brotherhood blows up something to stop the elevator, so we're not on the ground floor yet. That means that we have to fight through more of them. I tried running away to get into stealth, but couldn't get it to work, so the backup was Vats. We managed to do enough damage to the Brotherhood Knight that he decided to self-destruct his power armor. I thought we'd be fine because there was a wall between me and him, but nope, the explosion kills us. On our next attempt, we make it back to the knight, instead of running and hiding, we just use vats to wail on the knight until he went down. The initiates and scribes with him got incinerated by the explosion of his armor, and we ran off to get the elevator working again. After running past some more knights and scribes, we take a different elevator into the reactor room, where we snatch the reactor stuff that the institute wants, but we have to fight some robots on the way out. So we get the old rent collector ready, and go after the sentry bot. Hey, didn't Willow die like a dozen times to this thing exploding in a previous run? And this is a melee run? <laughs> you can cut to the explosion here or something if you got good footage of that. Well, after getting blown up, we try again. This time having a staring contest with the sentry bot until Allie takes him out. After that, we dismantled the two assault trons and make our way out to the lobby, where we die trying to run away from a knight. Alright, you know what? Not worth it. Well, you can have the run back. All right, fine. I'll come back and finish the run. Everybody give a huge round of applause to Big League MDB for voicing that dungeon for me. Where were we? Oh, right. We go through the entire Mass Fusion song and dance again, this time trying to hide until all the Brotherhood members in the lobby are dead. But unfortunately, that doesn't happen, and we have to kill a few ourselves. We start with killing a knight in power armor who self-destructs and kills us. <laughs> okay. Once more onto the breach, and this time we run like hell through the lobby and managed to get out in time. Yay! Teleporting back into the Institute and saving in the bed because I'll be damned if I do that again. I hand the gizmo to Allie in Advanced Systems and go to talk to Father. I sass him about being overworked. Oh, good. Here I was afraid I'd have nothing to do. And he tells us to go to some house in the middle of nowhere because there's a guy that he wants in the Institute living there. All right, we head off to the house and find a few gunners outside. I try sneaking and it works out great. The gunners end up angering the robots at Grey Garden and they die to them. We head inside and make some funny remarks. Right, we're here to steal your kidneys and your memories. That's why I'm wasting time talking to you through the door. That's not funny! None of this is funny! 
before a synth teleports in and knocks out the guy we're trying to take back to the Institute. And with that, I return to the Institute and sass father some more before giving a speech to the Commonwealth. And since nothing can be simple, I have to head to Diamond City and fix the radio station. Returning to the Institute once again, we turn on the new nuclear reactor and I attend my first directorate meeting as director of the Institute. At the end of the meeting, a synth runs up and tells me my apartment is flooding. Oh shit, I didn't take the flood insurance because I thought it was a scam. I rush over to find Z114 and a rather dry apartment luckily. He tells me the railroad is about to be attacked and oh wait, that's right, I'm siding with the railroad. You wouldn't know since I just spent so much time working with the Institute. I then waltz my way over to the railroad HQ to warn them just in time that the Brotherhood are coming. The first group is easy to deal with since we have all the railroad members helping us. After that, I go out to the catacombs to find Glory dying. Oh, sad. I promise to free all the synths and then go on a murderous rampage bashing in the metal heads of the Brotherhood. I managed to kill all but one of the Brotherhood Knights before succumbing to their dastardly lasers, and it's here where I realized the last time I slept was before heading out to deal with the gunners near Grey Garden. Oof. 20 minutes of my life wasted later, we are back at the Railroad HQ, and the first wave is easy again, and then comes the catacombs. Through cleverly running like a coward and using VAT sneak attacks, I managed to clear out all of the Brotherhood this time, and we talked to Desdemona. After sassing her for having unrealistic expectations, We eliminate the Brotherhood as a threat now, and the key to that is destroying their flying fortress, the Pridwick. Fortunately, we've got a contingency plan for that. Tom, we're activating Operation Red Glare. What? But Red Glare requires a Brotherhood vertebrae. Then Whisper will get you one. Sure, I'll just swing by the local Super Duper Mart and pick one up. Need milk too? I head out towards Cambridge Police Station with Deacon and Tinker Tom because we need to steal a vertebrae so we can take down the Brotherhood. I make my way there and meet up with the others, and I take it really slow, and honestly, the Cambridge Police Station wasn't too bad. I slaughtered anyone who wasn't in power armor, and Vats made the ones with power armor very manageable. The only real issue I ran into was the vertebrate that comes after you clear the station. I couldn't hurt it, so I had to wait forever while Deacon dealt with it. I then get on the vertebrate, and Tinker Tom, true to form, makes me laugh some more by being really bad at flying. Eventually, I make it to the Pridwin, don some brother Brotherhood get up Deacon got me and head inside. Proctor Quinlan starts talking to me and I walk away which was a mistake because it caused everyone on the ship to try and kill me. Oh wait, did I say try? No, they did. They really killed me. On our second attempt, I get further and plant all three bombs without getting noticed, but on my way out I'm found out and I do manage to get to the vertebrate, but Tinker Tom takes so long to fly away that I die to the hellfire of lasers coming from the ground. In this case, third time truly is the charm, as I managed to get in, place the bombs, and get out undetected, allowing us to watch this big beautiful blimp go up like a bonfire. After I make my way to the Railroad HQ, where Dez tells us it's time to take down the Institute, I teleport back into the Institute, take a nap, and then head up to the Relay Room, where I tell Z114 it's time. He says that I need to clear the room, so I kill the synth guards and, uh, that didn't anger the scientists in the room? Well, I can't progress without killing them, so I murder them as well. After that, Desdemona and Tinker Tom, along with some other railroad agents, teleport in and together we start making our way through the old robotics section of the Institute. At first, I tried taking it slow, but quickly got bored and started bum-rushing synths. I turn on a sentry bot and watch the chaos that ensues before jumping down a hatch and making my way into bioscience. Now, at this point, I was feeling pretty good and thought I had this run in the bag. So I switched to using the ripper that I got earlier and uh yeah wait I completely forgot to tell you all about the ripper and super sledge. All right rewinding a little bit before I decided to assault the institute I went to the West Everett estates where I knew I could find a ripper and I fought through all the super mutants including hammer their leader and managed to get both a super sledge and a ripper out of this encounter. I took them back to hangman's alley and upgraded them as well as giving them names like all of our other weapons and yeah so I was using the ripper and this thing is so weak it's not killing the synths very quickly and I uh I die 
Right, this is survival. I'm not allowed to have fun. While I make my way back to bioscience, you should consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It helps out the channel a lot. And if you want to support me even more, you can always become a channel member or Patreon. One shameless shill over, we're back in the Institute, and I've made my way back to the bioscience section without any issue. I continue on my merry way, bashing things in with my super sledge and baseball bat, with the occasional sprinkling of stabbing with my knife. After clearing bioscience and the main area of the institute, I go upstairs and show father a cool trick that'll make his head spin before spending a while hacking into his PC to send out an evacuation order and lift the lockdown. After this, I make my way to the reactor room and things are going well. I kill the first legendary synth with no issue, but then end up dying because a missile brings me to sub 10% health and there are a lot of lasers going around in this room. On my second attempt, I decide to pop all of the drugs in my inventory into my body and use a stealth boy to sneakily kill all of the threats before planting a fusion charge on the reactor, teleporting to the relay room, and adopting a synth child. After all of that is dealt with, we teleport out and press a button while answering the question, can I beat Fallout 4 survival difficulty with only melee? Yes, yes I can. Thank you all so much for watching, and if you enjoyed, please consider liking, subscribing, and commenting a new challenge suggestion. I want to give a special thanks to Madrybread for lending his voice for a part of the run as well as my Patreons and channel members as their support is tremendous. If you like this video, check out my last Fallout 4 challenge run with only crafted weapons, armor, and ammo. You all are so beautiful and this is Willow signing off. But if I lay down and I play down